It seems that the new book, Premka, My Life with Yogi Bhajan, has been rustling some feathers over at the Yogi Bhajan headquarters, the Sikh Dharma International, because they've issued a public affairs announcement about the book. And we'll look at that in a little bit. First, let's talk a little bit about the book. Pamela Dyson was the head top assistant to Yogi Bhajan for many years during the 70s and 80s. And she has written a revealing memoir that really gives a lot of the behind the scenes description of events and actions surrounding Yogi Bhajan in this 3HL organization that he founded. It's a very good book concerning the truth about Yogi Bhajan and exposes a lot of Yogi Bhajan's lies and how he deceived people. Now, let's talk about this public affairs announcement that has just been issued by a Shanti Kar Khalsa, who's the head of public affairs. I've known her for 20 or 30 years. And she's what I call a hardcore budgetist. She is a devout cult follower of Yogi Bhajan. And here's how they're trying to limit this um, damage from Pamela's new book, because there's been a lot of Kundalini Yoga teachers who are questioning Yogi Bhajan's practices and questioning their practice of Kundalini Yoga and the teachings of Yogi Bhajan. So the public affairs office over there at the Sikh Dharma International and 3HL, they're really concerned about how this book is affecting their bottom line, which is selling yoga. All right. So this is what the Public Affairs Office uh, says. Our organizations, speaking about Yogi Bhajan's organizations, stand united against abuse of power, sexual abuse, any form of exploitation, and any use of sexuality as a vehicle for causing harm. As a spiritual community, we are open to hearing concerns surrounding these issues and are committed to listening to opinions and experiences from every facet of our organizations, the way they put it. Doesn't sound like they're open to uh, listening to Pamela about how Yogi Bhajan abused her and how Yogi Bhajan abused other students and sexually harassed other students and, and how Pamela tells in her book how she was exploited by Yogi Bhajan and how Yogi Bhajan had sexual relations with her and the other staff members. That this is how what Pamela reveals in the book. But Yogi Bhajan organizations are not talking about those um, complaints, if you will, or those um, descriptions by Pamela at all. They won't deal with that the way it looks like. It says, we are aware of a recent book discussing certain experiences of the author in the 1970s and 1980s. We were not present for the experiences discussed in the book and cannot speak with firsthand knowledge about what transpired. Well, Shantikar, I have a message for you and the other budgetists. I was there during the 1970s and 1980s. I lived and worked in Los Angeles around Premka, as she was known at the time, Pamela Dyson, as she's known now. I worked closely with Yogi Bhajan. I was a security guard for Yogi Bhajan for many years during that time period. I worked as what was commonly called a Savidar, answering phones at 
Guru Ram Das ashram there, which is attached to Yogi Bhajan's residence. So I was there 60 or 70 hours a week between 1980 and 1984. So I witnessed a lot of these events and actions by Yogi Bhajan that Pamela describes in the book. I was a receptionist. I let people in to the back where Yogi Bhajan had his residence. In fact, Pamela describes in the book how she confronted Yogi Bhajan one day uh, and she asked the Sevadar, if you will, the receptionist at the front of uh, Guru Ram Das Ashram to buzz back and to let her in the back there or announce her coming in the back. And so it was probably me because I was there almost full time, 24 seven. I live just about a block away or so and I just walk there constantly. I was there night and day. So I'm pretty sure that was me. So I can attest to many of these things that Pamela is talking about. The way she describes these actions and uh, verbal abuses, if you will, of Yogi Bhajan, I witnessed many of those instances. Uh, there's not enough room in this video for me to talk about all of that. Um, I've written a book also. It's called Confessions of American Sikh. And uh, this is available on Amazon as well. Um, I'm not necessarily here to promote my book, but I'm just saying to you that um, I witnessed a lot of these events too. And if you want to read more um, after you've read Pamela's book, just look up Confessions of American Sikh by Gursant Singh and you'll be able to uh, read a lot of these uh, same experiences uh, that Pamela had. I had them as well. I can tell you that I witnessed uh, in the same ashram there in that area where the Gurdwara is right adjacent to Yogi Bhajan's uh, residence. Yogi Bhajan came out, there was a student there one day uh, he would been around for a while and he had some mental health issues. And Yogi Bhajan kicked him around the uh, ashram floor there, that, in the Gurdwara there, in the presence of Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, literally kicked him around the floor and he was crawling, trying to crawl away. And Yogi Bhajan was, continued to kick him as he was uh, pleading to Yogi Bhajan to stop. And finally the, the, um, the young man got up and, and, and ran out. So I witnessed things like that. I witnessed Yogi Bhajan on the phone. He would come out sometimes and um, talk on the telephone outside on the porch there where, there where I answered the phones. He would come just answer the phone sometimes by himself. And um, he talked to a woman for a while there. And after he hung up the phone, he said, she's crazy. You know, he demeaned people constantly. And so we just didn't see it then. Um, you know, it was, he was such a uh, powerful and charismatic uh, character. You have to imagine we were, I was in my 20s then. And so I didn't really um, have the self-confidence, if you will, or the um, uh, prowess or whatever to confront him. But I have to give uh, Pamela credit for appears that she confronted him. And uh, I really have to hand it to her for confronting him. Uh, that takes a lot of courage because Yogi Bhajan wasn't one to really listen to anybody for that matter. So I understand why um, she had to leave. I'm, I am uh, disappointed, if you will, that Yogi Bhajan, it appears, uh, drove her away from the Sikh faith. Uh, because it appears she's no longer a Sikh. Um, you can see that I'm still a Sikh. Uh, and I really feel blessed that I was able to keep my Sikhi. Uh, it appears, though, that Yogi Bhajan drove her away with all of his uh, twisting of the Sikh uh, religion. So, I can tell you other instances, too. Um, I would take Yogi Bhajan... Um, up to the estate where Premka 
uh, lived where she had her residence. I remember specifically on July 31st, 1982, when Indira Gandhi came to Los Angeles. Um, that night, uh, there was nobody else around there at the ashram, and I was Savadari. I was Savadari there at the Guru Ram Das ashram, sleeping on the floor. That's in, inside the door by the Gurdwara. Yogi Bhajan came out and he said, take me up to the estate. He was dressed in his um, typical brown shawl, uh, orange um, turban, house turban as we used to call him, just with his kacharas on and, a, and a, um, one of those um, uh, <clears throat> strong men t-shirt things with no sleeves. Anyway, so I, I definitely remember that instance. And I remember too, I, I was used to um, uh, drive, pick up things for errands, for, for do errands for his family, uh, for all the secretaries there, including Premka. And I would take them around different places. So I had this little brown uh, tan uh, Mazda station wagon. It was a very small little car. I can still remember it very distinctly. Um, and so Yogi Bhajan piled into that, that little tan Mazda. I remember that evening. It was about 1 a.m. in the morning. And uh, <clears throat> it was quite comical, actually, because he's so big. So I took him up to there to the estate and um, dropped him there. And um, I would do that several times. I took him different places in the middle of the night like that to different residences. So, uh, but I definitely remember that specific instance. And what made me think about it was how uh, Pamela talks about in her book um, that uh, she had a residence there at the estate at that time, about 1982. I don't, I don't know if Yogi Bhajan was going up there to meet with Pamela or uh, liaison with her, but I do remember that specific instance. Uh, I remember asking Yogi Bhajan, in fact, in the car, when we were going up to the um, estate, how uh, uh, Indira Gandhi had just been there that day in Los Angeles. And so I asked Yogi Bhajan, I said, do these people like Indira Gandhi ha really have power? And he answered, I think they do. I, I, they think they do, is the way he responded. They think they do. So I was a s student of political science, and I, um, at the time, uh, thought that was pretty in intuitive of Yogi Bhajan to say that. And in fact, I have to say, Yogi Bhajan was a very clever, um, businessman. He uh, was very um, involved in politics and uh, he was no dummy. There's no question about it. The issue that I have with him is that he twisted uh, the Sikh religion, that he um, twisted the Sikh scriptures, and he appropriated uh, the Sikh bana or the Sikh dress to um, uh, have his disciples uh, wear when they really knew nothing about true Sikhi. And it wasn't until about 2009 that I discovered uh, a book by Dr. Shalochan Singh, which describes how Yogi Bhajan misled and deceived all of his disciples to think that they were following the Sikh religion when they weren't. And I, I think this really bears out because all of those people are most, let's say 99% of all those people that left Yogi Bhajan also left Sikhi because they really didn't know what Sikh religion or the Sikh faith was about. Um, Yogi Bhajan had substituted his mantras um, and for the uh, Gurbani and twisted Gurbani in order to fit um, mantras for prosperity and health and all of these things like that, which is not, not part of the Sikh um, uh, faith. So Yogi Bhajan did a lot of twisting, manipulating, 
and deceiving people in order to sell his tantric and kundalini yoga. And that's what Shantikar and these Yogi Bhajan people are afraid of, that the revelations and the exposure that Pamela is making in this book of Yogi Bhajan's lies is going to affect their bottom line. It's going to affect the money that they bring in from these kundalini yoga classes, the yogi tea that they sell. Because Yogi Bhajan was a horrible example of some, somebody that you want to emulate. Um, the true character of Yogi Bhajan was one of deception, lies, um, he abused his students for power, money, and sex. That's what it amounts to. Now, I want to read a little portion of uh, Premka's, or I should say, I always knew her as Premka, but Pamela's book here, uh, which I thought was really revealing and really hit home for me um, in something that is relevant to uh, today's Kundalini Yoga students and teachers. So Pamela says here, this is on page 109 of the book, Premka, My Life with Yogi Bhajan. The Sikh religion is defined as a householder religion. This is how Pamela uh, is talking to Yogi Bhajan here. In fact, it's a basic premise of the Sikh religion to live a normal householder's life. You, you teach, you, you speaking to Yogi Bhajan, you teach that we worship through work, through devotion to family, and not by living a life of celibacy and self-denial. You, speaking to Yogi Bhajan, are married, and you have a dozen other relationships. So, Pamela is saying here, and she says throughout the book, how Yogi Bhajan had a sexual relationship with her, and um, she didn't want it. She says in many points in the book that she tries to tell Yogi Bhajan that she was fine with being celibate, but Yogi Bhajan tells her, no, 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 you need sex. This is just appalling. And, you know, it just, it shows me how Yogi Bhajan deceived everybody around him and how he's just a horrible example of somebody who Kundalini Yoga teachers would want to emulate. Um, she goes on to say, the truth is that I have felt isolated, overworked, overburdened, and my faith in my teacher was being seriously tested. My own father used to say, the boss may not always be right, but the boss is always the boss. I resented that concept and liked his other favorite quote even less. It's talking about Yogi Bhajan's other quote. Do as I say, not as I do. Those hypocritical statements embodied the philosophy that fueled my angry rebellion against my own parents, and now it seemed to be repeating in this alternate family dynamic. So, this brings up a really good point, how the Bhajanists, the cult followers of Yogi Bhajan, and some Kundalini Yoga teachers and students dismiss these allegations of Pamela's that Yogi Bhajan abused her and other um, students. That they use this rationalization to do as I say, not as I do, something that Yogi Bhajan would say. This is a fallacy because you don't want to emulate somebody who is corrupt, debauched. How can you possibly practice something like Kundalini Yoga, which Yogi Bhajan taught, his Kundalini Tantric Yoga, he made up 
We all know that he created this um, practice, Kundalini and Tantric Yoga. So what would anybody, how would anybody think that Yogi Bhajan was not trying to make us, the people that practiced his yoga, like him? You know, Yogi Bhajan was not out there just selling cars or some invention like, I don't know, the computer or something. He was selling a lifestyle. He was selling uh, a way to become healthy, happy, and holy. And his teachings were emulating himself. So when people say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, or, you know, Yogi Bhajan's um, not perfect, um, this does not rationalize the practice of, kund of his Kundalini Yoga. Many yoga academics, we'll say, and scholars have pointed to the fact that Yogi Bhajan, Yogi Bhajan's practices are not accepted within that academic community or those, those people who really know Tantric and Kundalini Yoga. They're outside of the norm, we'll put it. And many have talked about how they have ill health effects, this, especially this breath of fire, uh, this quick breath that Yogi Bhajan taught. And it charges people up. It raises the Kundalini Yoga, the Kundalini, if you will. And um, it makes be, some people really crazy, if you will. And um, it's not something to just take lightly. Um, Yogi Bhajan had his own style. There's a, there's a really good academic paper, this Maharaj the Mahan Tantric, um, written by this uh, Philip Deslepi, which talks about how Yogi Bhajan basically made up um, these kriyas and meditations. So um, the next time you um, meditate, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying those Kundalini Yoga teachers and uh, students meditate on Yogi Bhajan's picture, which was one of the um, meditations Yogi Bhajan gave out. Uh, think about if you want to emulate this man who was nothing more than a customs officer, came here to be a businessman and sell his Kundalini Yoga and make a lot of money. If you want to be like him, uh, these um, events and character descriptions of Yogi Bhajan by Pamela in the book, I think are pretty accurate. She goes into quite detail about it. And from my experience and uh, knowledge, firsthand knowledge uh, about Yogi Bhajan, I pretty much think she's being truthful in this book. That's my take on it. And my feeling is that if the Yogi Bhajan people, the hardcore Bhajanists, if you will, want to really get to the truth and really want to protect their Kundalini Yoga teachers and students from abuse, um, sexual abuse or whatever abuse of power, they should have hearings. They should, um, like the Congress, U.S. Congress does, have hearings and invite Pamela, myself, um, Vikram Singh, many of these people who are around Yogi Bhajan in the early days and uh, through the 70s and 80s to come there and testify. And we'd really get to the bottom of these um, uh, allegations. Uh, I think it will really um, help the uh, organizations that have been left behind and the people especially that have been left behind by Yogi Bhajan who are 
really, I think, in a very difficult position, having to defend a, an abuser like Yogi Bhajan and having to promote his Kundalini Yoga. Uh, I just think it's an impossible position without them really coming clean and really delving into uh, the truth about Yogi Bhajan. Thank you for your time. And I'm going to put a series of uh, pictures that I've um, gathered over the years from Los Angeles, many of the places that Pamela has talked about in her book. Um, I have put in this slideshow, if you will, after this little talk I've given. And um, please comment uh, in the description to this video as to any of your experiences with Yogi Bhajan or if you have any um, future suggestions how we can bring the truth out and we can all become better people. Why Gujikat Khalsa? Why Gujikifate?